Hi everybody and welcome back to Get Stuck In. We're going to do exactly that with the, the seven or eight races at Cheltenham this week. Is it seven or eight? Eight. 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 The Clarence House obviously rescheduled. I couldn't remember if it was uh, six, seven, eight. Anyway, it's eight, we believe. Uh, with Martin Dixon and Dan Barber, as you've already seen. And we're going to get straight into it because we don't have that much to look back on, obviously, with the weather. Uh, but Long Presley at the, the weekend, Linkfield, is he a genuine Gold Cup contender? I think he has to be. Um, you know, I think obviously he's going to have to improve and he would probably need such as a gallop in Deschamps not to be at his best to be winning a Gold Cup. But I think he's a contender. It showed us first and foremost that all of his ability remains. Mm. Uh, we know that Cheltenham's a track that suits him well. We won the Brown Advisory a couple of years ago and beat a Hoysenjo. So it was a quality field that he beat a couple of years ago as a novice. Um, and I think Cheltenham's a track and the Gold Cup trip will suit him well. So conditions should be ideal for him at Cheltenham. And like I say, it shows that he retains his ability from a couple mm. of seasons ago. And still, over and above that there's an element of potential with Lon Presse because mm. he hasn't had that much chase, uh, racing as a staying chaser overall and apart from last year's winner Cal Chomps you've got sort of question marks about them haven't you Hello. Mm. yeah there were a lot it was perceived that Jerry Colomb would be the one stepping up to the plate and it didn't go too well did it I mean he, he scrambled home at Down Row we discussed him in the aftermath and then really Gallop under Chomps left him for dead but one thing I sort of think in the post race analysis that barely got a mention was just I thought the winner that day, Gallop under Champs, was at a massive advantage going wide. Everything else up the inside, you had horses like conflated that stay perfectly well. Like, how well does I am Maximus stay? He was on oxygen approaching the last. I thought he had the perfect run of the race anyway. If you want to judge the subsequent form through any prism, look at, appreciate it, who also went wide because Mullins seemed to know where to go. He was tailed on on the weekend behind Alaho. Going back to Long Press, yeah, I think for the reasons that we stated, due to lack of other alternatives, mm. he is a very realistic contender. You've always got the concern of second start back after a big effort like that. But He's got a good ask, isn't he? Yeah, so that, that will tell us more. If you get an encouraging display there where he doesn't go backwards, you'd be pretty confident he'll be showing his form at Cheltenham as well. I'd definitely have him top of the tree personally in terms of British track. Oh yeah, undoubtedly. So what about Shishkin? You said last time Shishkin was the... Yeah, apart from Shishkin, yeah. The horse is definitely <laughs> going to win the race. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's, he's still my number one, as you know now. I can't, I can't shift that. Albeit, I got a understandable feedback which suggested that people didn't agree with me. He said Shishkin was a better chance than Gallop and Deschamps. I said I think there's a case to say that he's arguably the best day in chaser in training. I don't think it's that outlandish. Well, this is what we'll learn in March, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's okay. what it's about. <laughs> what do you think? Should we should we breathalyse our pundits? Let us know. What's your thoughts? Do get in contact uh, in the normal way. And what was your thoughts on Long Press at the weekend? Right, it's time for us to go around the yards. We're going to speak to Emma Lavelle about her stable star, and he really is a stable star, Paisley Park winner for last year's Cleave. Can he follow up? The betting says he can. We're also going to speak to James Owen and Richard Hobson, who've got decisions to make. Their stable stars are doubly entered, Fugitive and also Burdette Road. Let's catch up with James first and find out what way he's leaning. The last time we spoke to Richard Hobson, Fugitive went out and won the feature race at Cheltenham. Hopefully, he can repeat the dose this Saturday. Richard joins us once again. Richard, he's in the Clarence House. He's in the feature handicap as well. What way are you leaning towards? Um, we're going to have a look at both races, to be honest with you now. Um, the Clarence House is a strong possibility. I know it's a step back in trip. Um, he has won a couple of chases over two miles. He's not lacking the pace. Hmm. Um, it's not a slow boat, you know, he's got plenty of pace and he probably wouldn't have as hard a race in, in the Clarence House he would possibly would off top weight in the handicap, so we've sort of got to be open to ideas with the, the Rhino in mind six weeks after. Yeah, yeah, absolutely and the thing is, his, his sort of CV, that, that his Cheltenham form he just seems to love that track He loves the track um, and um, you know, if we could be placed in, in the Clowns House, why not? You know, the prize money is really good. Um, he's the third, third highest rated horse in the race. So he'll finish the race off strong from a strong strong run pace. Um, you know, there's no reason. You know, it's, if it's a four or five runner race, anything can happen, can't it? It's been good to watch his owner, Carl. He's bringing the trophy everywhere he goes. The trophy's done oh, plenty of miles. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's, you know, that's what the game's all about, isn't it? Um, enthusiastic owners like that and um, supporting the game, supporting a small yard like ours. And, um, yeah, it, it's fantastic to see, isn't it? Yeah, he's supporting you. You're not letting them down. You've done a fantastic job with him. We wish you all the best whatever race you go in Saturday. We look forward to catching up with you. Thanks, Richard. 
Burnett Road's the best of the English juveniles, isn't he? He's in two races, sorry, he's in the JCB Triumph, he's also in the Unibet. Uh, James Owen joins us now, are you leaning towards keeping him in his own age group? I think that's, I think that was probably what happened, but um, listen, it's still open, still open, he's entered in both for a reason, to give us an option, and we'll, we'll, I'll speak to Tim closer to the time, Harry's in to school him on Thursday morning, we'll, we'll make a decision then. Yeah, Um would it be straight? Everything went well Saturday. You'll be straight to Cheltenham. You won't go Adonis straight to the festival. Uh, I'll hopefully, just have one more ru- this run, and then um, he'll go straight to straight to Cheltenham. Hopefully, all being well. I seen a feature with him at, at home on Racing TV recently. He, he looks really chilled out, enjoys his work, thriving on it, isn't he? Yeah, he's he, he's really you know he's thriving on it, and um, he's really got his act together. Schooling, he scored he scored again this morning, and uh, he worked really nicely on Saturday. Uh, and Harry will come and give him his final, final pop over hurdles on um, Thursday. But no, he's all. I couldn't couldn't be happier with him at home. Looking forward to the weekend and looking forward to the you know, the the season ahead with him. Yeah, uh, it's been a good story, isn't it? Tim Gridley, yourself, you, you're all really enjoying it and buying into it, and you appreciate. Do you know that these good ones don't come around that quickly? I know. I, I'm in a very lucky position, you know, to get these get these nice flat horses and. Um, so far, it's you know it's working, and long long may it continue. Absolutely, we look forward to seeing you Saturday, uh, James. Thanks for the updates. Thanks very much. I joined now by Emma Lavelle to talk all things Paisley Park. Oh, he's been beaten twice this season, but what two belting runs he's run in in, in defeat. And you go back to this time last year, we won the Cleve Hurdle. He was reluctant to jump off. This year, he's just looking like he's thriving. Yeah, look, he's he's in great heart, um, and uh, and you know his. His two uh, runs uh, so far this season have just kind of been amazing and heartbreaking in equal measures. Um, yeah, he just to get so close and not get his head in front. But he's um, look, he's been brilliant. And um, yeah, I always said from the start of the season it'd be a race by race uh, sort of decision on what we do. And look, he's he seems to be still loving it. He's turned twelve. But um, he had a school this morning, and and the plan is is to try and win the Cleve for a fourth fourth time. So, which even just yeah. saying that seems extraordinary. It does, it does, and it's 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 it just tells you that every year you have it that Cheltenham form. He just seems to love the place. The race develops far enough out, and then he he gets going. Yeah, I think it does really suit him around there, and and um, you know it's all about staying. So hitting the hill and and having to gallop all the way to the line is. You know, he's he is all about um, you know that that relentless speed or relentless gallop rather than just speed. Mm. But um, look, he's 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 been an absolute superstar for us, and and while he continues to enjoy it and love Cheltenham, we'll continue heading there. I, I was a head up last time when he got beat, and the, the the gas from the crowd around the place was unbelievable. You know, you're thinking, is he going to hang on? Is he going to hang on? When and it looked like Crambo just got up and. You know, it was just, it, it's the thing about jump racing and his age, 12 years young, it, people just love him, don't they? Yeah, they do. And it is special and it is emotional. You know, you go racing and you hear the, you know, just the noise of people shouting for him. Um, you know, it, it's a, it's an absolute privilege to train a horse like that. And, and they don't come along, you know, very often. And I imagine he could finish up being a once in a lifetime horse for us. But it, the fact that um, he has, has created such a, a sort of uh, support group around him is is you know it says so much for him. Yeah, absolutely, and obviously Andrew's owner, is such a popular man as well. He's got tight in our belts. He's in at Doncaster. He's in at Cheltenham. He's a progressive young chaser. What's your thoughts with him Saturday? Uh, I think we'll probably go to Cheltenham with him. Um, I'm not convinced he'd want the ground to be bottomless. Uh, I think the forecast is that it should improve as the week progresses. Mm. So you know, with that in mind, I think Cheltenham is where he'll head. He's um, look it, 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 running against Dile Francais at uh, at Kempton. I think maybe he just didn't he wasn't quite himself and scared himself at the second. But the pace that they went in that race, that I just they're not going to go that pace anywhere else. So um, you know, I think it, it should suit him coming back into handicap company. His last two runs have been in graded company. Yeah. Uh, I think he's a smart horse. So yeah, no doubt to getting him out again. Yeah, we're looking forward to seeing him. We're looking forward to seeing Paisley Park, obviously. We're looking forward to seeing you as well, Emma. Thanks for the updates. We look forward to seeing you Saturday. Lovely. Cheers now. Okay, it's time for Team Tracker. Dan and Martin are going to stick up a couple of horses. There hasn't been loads of racing. What has caught your eyes? 
Tell of the Name is one that sticks in my mind. I'm going back a bit now. Obviously, we've had a, that cold snap, but Tell of the Name won as you'd expect him to. His odds on to win a race at Huntingdon, but he beat two horses that had shown plenty of ability previously. And this is the horse who got Keelan Wood saying that he was the best he'd ever ridden after he pushed Django Bay close first time out over hurdles at Ascot. I was so impressed. Yeah, it looks like a straightforward task. He was absolutely sprinting passing the line. He had loads more to give. I'd like to see him have a crack at a handicap with him because he looks really professional already. Okay. And Billy Boy Blue for me won at Hereford last Monday. Um, just looks a really honest staying horse. He's only run over intermediate trips so far. Has managed to win a bumper firstly and then won his novice hurdle last week at Hereford. But found loads for pressure running over two and a half. He's he's bound to step up to three miles in time. I think when he goes handicapping, they'll probably do that with him and there'll be plenty more improvement to come. So Billy Boy Blue for Graham McPherson. Okay. You need more than one hand to count the number of Venetia horses that properly thrive, you know, when they when they go chasing especially. Just one idea, Mark, from Leicester earlier in the month was Joe Les Scribar. Finished third, going right up the inside at Leicester, which is just a complete no-no. You can't win up there. The ground's so much slower. But I suspect he's one of those ex-French horses that Venetia will sort of give a bit of time to acclimatise and he'll take off when he's chasing next season. Okay, there's three horses uh, to keep a close eye on uh, in the coming weeks and the, the rest of the season. Hopefully Team Tracker, the horses, uh, yes, should be winning sooner rather than later. And once again, do let us know any horses that have caught your eye. Get in touch the usual way. OK, it's time now to look at Festival Focus and the Ryan Ayres race we're going to concentrate on after Alaho. Impressed? Not impressed? Thoughts? Not. <laughs> well, not. It's, it seems a bit harsh because... I mean, this was one of the most brilliant chases we've seen in modern times. I think that obliteration, not just of two Ryanairs previously, but he went to that Punchestown Gold Cup, gave Colin De Zobo a 14-length beating, Album Foto, the Gold Cup winners behind, in third. But he's sort of handing out a similar distance of beating this season on two of his three starts to horses that aren't just in the same league as that. Statler's running over the wrong trip. I know it's a horse that you're particularly fond of. I tried putting him up at the Gold Cup last season unwisely. I just don't think he is the same force. And I know three miles isn't his thing and necessarily, and tracking the pace rather than forcing it isn't ideal. But I just look at Kempton and think if he was at his best, he'd have taken advantage of Shishkin's misfortune and he'd have been able to capitalise on it. I just don't think he is the same horse and I think what was a massive chasm between him and the rest is now narrowed significantly mm. and he could be vulnerable on the day. Mm. Um, what's your thoughts? Do you I, I, I basically agree yeah. with everything Dan's just said to be honest with you. I think if, if he was as good as he was he would definitely have gone more strongly through the Kempton race than he did the King George than what he did. Um, he was in trouble a little bit too far out for me in terms of, you know, he, what, it was clear that he wasn't going to win the race from some way out, um, up the home straight at least. And I think if he was as good as he was, he would have just carried himself a lot further on the bridle through the through the King George and probably had horses in trouble and he didn't do that. So And his other two performances this season, as Dan touched on, he hasn't really had to, to do much that's probably £10, maybe 10 to £15 below his very best performance. So on the flip side of the coin, whereas two years ago he was four to six in anti-post markets, he is as big as 11 to four. So yeah, it is yeah. kind of factored, factored into in. the betting. And, and he's 11 to four because the Ryanair, it's not keeping me awake at night thinking right. about how excited I am about well, it. Well, th then that's the other positive in terms of Alaho. Yeah. It, like he doesn't need to be as good as he was. He, yeah. he won the race by 12 lengths, he won it by 14 lengths for starters so there's a fair there's a fair bit of mileage to work with there yeah. if you're positive about him and 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 um and also is what's the opposition going to be yeah. like it looks like to me it would be pre fairly small field yeah um for a ryanair banbridge is an obvious horse that is yeah. going to be a big player if the ground is decent yeah they, anyway. they, they do see him as very ground dependent you can yeah. see why can't you if it's yeah. soft ground he might not turn up he, he might not go there true, they yeah. missed they missed cheltenham last year with bambridge didn't they and and you know if it's genuine soft or heavy ground he might not end up there i think we're, we're both on the same hymn sheet yeah, yeah. fugitive at a big price being yeah. a, a horse that could end up being a ryanair contender and if you're looking at playing anti-purse markets, he's as big as 33 to 1. I think he's probably going to run in the Cotswold at the weekend, so they're going out of handicap company. Clarence House. Sorry, the Clarence yeah. House at the weekend, so out of handicap company. Um, and that will potentially yeah. put them out of handicaps for the season if he goes and runs well in a Clarence House, and therefore you'd be thinking Ryanair would be the obvious yeah. place for him. And if the Ryanair ends up being a seven or six, seven run a race and you're on at big prices, anti-purse three places, it could look a very good bet, couldn't it? But, you know, 
he'd need to go some to beat Alaha, even on this season's form, yeah. to be fair, wouldn't he? But you'd, what you're hoping with him to some extent is you, you know from his perspective that the track is absolutely perfect. He loves the place. He never fails to perform yeah. around there. Loads of form in competitive handicaps. His jumping's a real asset. I think he's better than he's ever been this season. I mean, it was some effort to come from as far back as he did. And I know that top-end handicap company doesn't always translate rating for rating with the top group uh, grade ones because you go in that different gallop etc but i think if he can even get close to the handicap form the way that field promises to cut up i think that'll be if, enough if, to if, 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 he, if he if he ends up in a ryanair he'll run well in it won't yeah. he? he's just so consistent but yeah. ultimately my my thinking is that aloe isn't the horse that he was but he probably doesn't need to be to win this year's yeah. ryanair so it kind of depends where you're at price wise i suppose but uh, he is a much bigger price anti purse this time around than he was a couple of years ago Okay, that's the lad's thoughts. What's your thoughts on Alaho? Good thing or not, will he win another Ryanair chase? Let us know. Right, so now something for the weekend and Cheltenham Trials uh, weekend. It looks like the ground's going to be quite nice. It's, it's drying out later in the week. It's a meeting that over the years, I think it was three last year, went on to win at the festival. It, it really is trials for, for the festival. So with that in mind, we're going to canter through all eight races. And the first is a JSP. JCB, easy for me to say, a try of trial. And Burnett Road, he's been the best of the English, hasn't he? And yeah. we spoke, we heard from James Owen, it sounds like he's going to line up here. Yeah, a couple of great stories in this race. You've got this Salva as well, who's got this weird background, had one run on the flat in Italy. No idea how they sourced him. He's turned into an unbeaten hurdler, doing really well. But I just struggle to believe, logically, there will be a better juvenile than Burnett Road. That level of flat form, he, he's almost like a hark back to the times when Howard Johnson was getting really good flat material and developing those over hurdles. He's that level of quality that he's got. The burst of pace he's shown to assert twice has been really striking. There's not another juvenile I'd want to be on, particularly when you consider, as you've mentioned, with the ground. Mm. I mean, if it comes down to a test of speed, who's going to be best equipped for it? Surely him. Mm. Yeah, I think he's, he's going to be a worthy favourite. And of, of all the races on the day, this is probably the most likely to be a proper trial, yeah, isn't absolutely. it? We've got um, Burdett Road, Sir Gino created a massive impression at Kempton. I would give a mention anti post to Exolera, who um, was beaten by Salva at Warwick in November, but there was only a couple of links between them at Warwick. That was Exolera's race course debut. He'd never run before. He's been given plenty of time. Obviously, he's not run since, but Salva has gone on to frank that form. The pair were miles clear. And Exolero is about a 20 to 1 shot as we speak on Tuesday. So that could end up shortening yeah. up a little bit as maybe some wise money comes for him. But, uh, you know, Bird at Road looks the, the likeliest winner. OK, that's the first race of the afternoon, the JCB Triumph Trial. The second race of the afternoon is the Time Form Novice Handicap Chase. It's priced up sort of 4 to 1 in the field, uh, speaking on, on Tuesday morning. Um, what catches the eye? Uh, very much at the prices for me is tied to know our belt. So I know Martin liked it essentially put this horse up on the track early in the season. Um, two runs outside Handicap Company, that day at Ludlow where he got into the track, he was really, really impressive. Always looked a chaser, proved it straight away, thrashed a field in which the third horse has come out and advertised that form since. But I thought he held his own really well in the Hermes Allen, John Franken race at, at Newbury. No surprise he was taken off his feet by Ile Francais at Kempton, given how brilliant he was. I'd put a line through that. He goes back in a handicap, a stone higher than he won off at Ludlow, but he won that race like a 145 plus horse. So I'm happy to stick with him. He's 10 to 1 at the time recording. Fear Ginny's destiny is form strong and he's really likeable, but this is a horse who's more than twice the price and I think has got more races in him. Martin? I'll say no more. Ring the bell, push them all in, and <laughs> I think we're all Sorry. on the tighten our belts uh, train. So yeah. fingers crossed he goes well at the weekend. Okay, it could be a big day for, for owner uh, and trainer, obviously, Paisley Park to come in her feature hurdle. Third race of the afternoon is a two and a half mile handicap chase. I suppose this race here is lots of these are entered at Doncaster, doubly entered, and what's going to line up? Yeah, that's it. A, a, a few of the key horses potentially, like a Victorino, has been impressive when he's his last two starts, but probably more likely to go to Doncaster. I would have thought Gar Law, who would come into it on his best form, but again, probably more likely to go to Doncaster. Um, so they're single figure prices in the anti purse market. It could be the type of race that Il Rodoto sort of has. He could end up a shorter price than you'd imagine for a race like this, for a big, big money handicap chase, because the race could well cut up into maybe eight or nine runners. Um, it's understandable that he's sort of four to one up at the head of the market, given his consistency and, and regular le level of form around Cheltenham. Nothing more to add. I'd enough to find a runner, a definite runner, let alone yeah. a winner. You know Il Rodoto will go. You know he'll be primed. Nichols, 
absolutely thrives on these pre Cheltenham prizes, yeah. identifying Yeah, them. if it was nice grounded, Al Kirby, who uh, would come into the mix, I think, on his best form, he was a bit disappointing when he folded at, at Kempton over Christmas, but he's better than that. He'd won at Cheltenham on his penultimate start, and uh, you know he might be a, a player, if, well, he would be a player if he came back to his best efforts. OK, we'll maybe have a look Thursday morning at 10 o'clock when the final declarations come through for that two-and-a-half-mile handicap chase. At 1.50 is the Cotswold Chase. Six horses are entered. Hopefully most of them will, will uh, stay stay going, stay in there. Royal Pagai, the, the weather's going to going to dry up. Is, it, is that a big thing about him? Yeah. I think it is, yeah. I think it's a big concern, isn't it? You've also got to have question marks over really what Haydock was worth in mm. truth. You know, it was perfect for him. Others didn't mm. perform. He ended up a wide margin winner. What rating would you put on it? It's kind of a, it's all guesswork in my opinion anyway. Um, I think he would be unsure to reproduce that form on Ch at Cheltenham on drying ground um, and his record tells us that so very opposable I think up at the top of the market um, I think the real whacker will, will have a good chance at Cheltenham it's, it's a track we know suits him it will be a small field likelihood that he might be able to get out and, and dominate a race like that potentially and we know from last season that he did get better with his racing through the season obviously Patrick Neville had a very quiet start to the season so it might be about time for the real whacker to peak and it's a type of conditions and track and um, size of field mm. that will suit him well. A stay away phase, he, a novice, good to have him there. That's all right, Gino, obviously won the, the Carl Gold Cup, hoist in year, mm. winner of the race in the last year, but he needs to sort of bounce back quick. Yeah, stay away phase might be the best prospect in yeah. the race, but there's always that worry going into a race like this for the first time, where the real whacker will be winging fence to fence, that that sort of loss of concentration he has, where it's a flat spot, will come back to haunt him. I was really impressed with that, so, right, Gino at Newbury in what used to be the Hennessy in our Ladbrokes Trophy. I know Martin thinks that Marla Mission can't get beaten in the Gold Cup, so <laughs> the fact that he was able to see off that horse as they sprinted away, and you just don't really see many big field handicaps like that, won by a horse that's dropped right out the back and picks his way through. It's often the sound jumpers out the front that keep going, so mega impressed with him. They've kept him fresh since, and yeah, you can't not like that Marla Mission form. OK, that's a look at the Cotswold Chase once again. Let us know what you fancy ahead of uh, one of the features in a really good card Saturday. Uh, it's good to have the Clarence House reschedule, obviously, from Ascot last week. And it looks like John Bonner's going to canter around. He's going to be long odds on to win, isn't he? Yeah, fair play for salvage in a race of the real rich history, but it's, it is going to be little more than an exercise gallop, you'd think, for him. You've got Fugitive, who we've mentioned, in line with a potential Ryanair bid later in the campaign, but... He's running over the wrong trip, and I suppose you got Edward Sheed, who won the race last year in it. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's yeah, and he, and he was back to back to something like his best, wasn't he, over Christmas? So, look, if he if he performs to his best form, then at least he's a genuine sort of rival in a something yeah. to aim at for for John Bond. But you would expect John Bond on recent form to to pick him up and do it easily. I it's think. a shame because a, a week ago if Ascot would have got the go ahead we'd have seen a sort of clash that we really mm. crave mm. when we're all the discussion is about Constitution Hill missing this target and missing that target you were going to see John Bond against El Fabiolo round three or four mm. and the weather cost that and we're now left with a, a far less interesting race. Okay John Bond it is in the reschedule Clarence House uh, is, he a, is he a good thing as the betting suggests let us know. Right, the feature herd race is you a bit hurdle. Once again, what's going to line up? We're going to wait for Willie Munns on Thursday morning. <laughs> That's what we need. We need Willie on the line today, yeah. don't we, really, about this. But um, in Pere Pass, I think the, the suggestions were that he might go there, but maybe the betting market suggesting otherwise. Now, Lossy Mouth, she'd be having her first try, uh, first race um, since last spring, if she was to take her chance. So would Gallimarso as well, um, who's the other Mullins entry. So the, the, the two mares, Gallimarso and, and Lossy Mouth, have got the option of going to Doncaster as well. So all a little bit up in the air, but clearly Willie Mullins holds the, the strong hand here and mm. you'd expect him to win the race, whatever he sends, to be honest mm. with you. Yeah, they could just run it at Clos Hudson, couldn't they? <laughs> just have a race what about Love Envoy? Been a solid yeah. mare. Yeah, I mean, look, she, she is a good mare, isn't she? And, we know we know she's very talented. We know she's very effective at Cheltenham. So she's she's a definite runner at least. So um, we know that she's going to go there and take on at least one of the Mullins horses. That's one thing to say. I'd be more confident she could beat Lossy Mouth than I would an on song mm. in Pere Pass. I mean, it's his first start out with Juvenile Company, mostly run against Phillies. Mm. There is a chance that Love Envoy just proves sort of a hardier, more streetwise horse. But and she's had a run this season. Yeah, and she, she's. Well. I mean, yeah, the betting will be very revealing, but it seems to be telling a tale already. Yeah, that lost him out. Maybe the one that's coming over the RSC. Who knows? 
we'll find out Thursday morning. The penultimate race is the Cleve Hurdle and good old Paisley Park, what a superstar he's been. He's looking to win it for the fourth fourth time. Shock horror, I'm going to give him a positive mention. <laughs> <laughs> At Lord Lolly of the Month, actually, Andrew Gemmel came over with Emma Lavelle and he said, um, oh, it's Dan, isn't it? Are you... Thanks for all the words of support over the years, just because he's been an absolute favour of mine for so long now. And that, that fire still burns brightly. Crambo's it, uh, the up Just a quick one, Dan. Has he won you or lost you more money? I don't know. No. <laughs> it's not all about that. Did you, no, did you have a big day on him, a big win? I can't remember. I, for me, it was just... Where the love story started. Well, just the horse who was... You know, it's had such a distinctive running style and saw his race out so strongly. They, yeah, they, I think you, the you, you, did out, you were keen on him, weren't you? In the, yeah. yeah, well, obviously, uh, it was, I think my penultimate winner I ever backed was him in... <laughs> <laughs> it was him in 1997. Um, he has obviously been around for ages, but the fact he's pushed the up-and-comer Crambo all the way, his record in the Cleve prior to that stupid race last year where they crawled around was impeccable. He was three from three. This is his cup final. Emma Lavelle has heard speaking about it the other week that others will be going straight to Cheltenham like Crambo. They're not. They're going for the race that he's basically made his own. And I think he might be in better form this year than he was yeah. last as well. He seems to be, doesn't he? I mean, that was a big, big effort at Newbury even, wasn't it? When mm. Dash, he pushed Dashiell Drasher and had, had to give him weight that him day six as well. Power, so yeah. it was, that, that was a, both of his performances this season have been right up His there. level weights. So, um, yeah. He, had, he, he was six lengths behind, I think, Dashiell Drasher as well. Uh, the other yeah. day. I mean, Dashiell Drasher's, da Dashiell Drasher's advantage will be if he's able to sort of dictate the race, won't it? If, he's, yeah. if they do crawl round again and he's kind of at the front end, then that, that will give him an edge potentially. be interesting to see how Noble Yates gets on as well. He's got an entry in the stayers hurdle. Obviously, they're going to have bigger spring targets back over fences, etc. But they're, they're trying, to, trying to do something different with him in the, in the meantime. So I want to keep an eye on My hope tactically will be that Champ reverts to being ridden forcefully after his return. You could have strong leader if he goes for this. He's been making the run in. As long as something takes on Dash or Drush here, mm. I'm hoping he's going to be left vulnerable to Paisley Park's turn of foot and I can celebrate my second or third time backing him when he won. Yeah, <laughs> good stuff, right? Paisley Park, yeah, be no more popular winner uh, Saturday. Are you with or against him in the Cleve? Let us know. And we conclude Saturday's card with a Grade 2 novice hurdle and we look at entries, once again repeating ourselves on, on Tuesday, we, we have to wait to Thursday and see the final list, but there's a host of really young and improving horses that, that you'd expect at this meeting. Yeah, it looks it looks a cracking race, doesn't it? And, you know, we've got the likes of Chocker Block who's appeared on a, a tracker, I think, earlier on in the season on this programme, um, has an entry for the race. Nicky Henderson's got a few possibilities in there, Jingo Bear being another one. Um, I think Gidley Park will be, uh, you know, an exciting horse for Harry Fry. So he he's, he could run here. Um, look away, I'd expect to run very well. I think he will run. He's got loads of experience um, as a novice hurdler. He's had a lot of lot of, uh, consistent season, and he's had loads of racing at Cheltenham already. So he's a genuine sort of mid one thirties horse. He's always been talented. Like I say, he's got loads of experience. I could see him being mm. being in if the mix. If he runs here, he's in the hurdle. Yeah, he's in the best. Yeah. Look, it, they might they might choose not to go here, mm. but if they declare him Thursday, I could see him running very yeah. well in it. He's a solid 137, and you yeah. know a bit more about his mark, don't you? Yeah, and he's still getting better, to be yeah. fair. He's sort of steadily progressed through the season. He hasn't got quite as um, sexy profile as some of the others that are maybe coming into it unbeaten, but that experience that he's got and proven level of form will stand him in pretty good stead, I think, to run very well if they do choose to come here. OK, you're keeping an eye on him. Uh, Django Bay would be the one I'd be keeping an eye on as well. Obviously, Gidley Park's going to be a short price favourite. Everybody's been talking about him, and he's been very impressive, but... Django Bay's been beating himself. Yes, he needed Gordon's promising novice to tip up the other day and Sean Bowen got injured in the latest re the latest renewal. I say latest renewal, the first ever renewal of the form being novices heard like Aintree. But he's a horse who beat Tell the Name, who I put up on the tracker earlier. And when he made a winning start at Ascot, I do think he's got a, a fair bit of potential still and some untapped stamina. He basically looks a good prospect to me. I remember Michael Goff had him as point of point. He was second to no flies in him. The horse of Eddie O'Grady's was really impressive. I remember him that, that mm -hmm. day he was second at knocking art. So yeah, he, he could be an exciting horse him. OK, that's all eight races on Cheltenham Trials Day. We've had a quick canter through. Do let us know what you fancy. Uh, best, best... Come on, just give us a um, I think Excelera will shorten up in the market for the Triumph Hurdle trial. I think the real whacker is a good bet at around 4-1 to one for the Cotswold. How about an Andrew Gemmel, Emma Lavelle double? Because I certainly think Titan Our Belts is overpriced at 10s mm. in the time form race and good old Paisley Park can bring the house down in the cleave. That'll be four wins. I mean, some of these horses don't even run four times in a season. This horse is still <laughs> going. He's an absolute star and mm. I think there's still plenty of ability there. Okay. 
good stuff there's our thoughts what's your thoughts uh, for the weekend we'll be back next week to review what happened at Cheltenham and to look ahead uh, once again thanks for watching and do keep in touch see you soon